Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny. Welcome back to some more FNAF news. Got a whole bunch of very interesting stuff to talk about today. A brand new interview happening with the fine folks over at Steel Wool Studios. We got a bunch new merchandise releasing pretty soon from Funko. It's been a while since we've had a new Funko launch. A whole bunch of YouTube stuff, some sales for various FNAF games happening right now during the spooky season. So let's not waste any more time. If you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing. Talk about FNAF videos all the gosh dang time we're trying to hit 50k by the end of the year also hit the like button i sound like a broken record at this point but now let's move on to the news first up it feels like every single time we do a fnaf news video there's some brand new hot topic shirt and lo and behold this week is no different you got a brand new security breach shirt coming from hot topic featuring the glam rock animatronics vanessa in the back also vanny interesting art style i think some of the characters look good vanessa my girl in the back not so much moving on now to some brand new funko reveals we got the official first look at some brand new products coming from Funko 4, some FNAF era skins. Here is a look at the upcoming Frostbite Balloon Boy plushie. I've seen some people say it looks pretty good. I've heard some people say it doesn't look like Balloon Boy or FNAF affiliated at all, which I agree. But then again, I also think most of Balloon Boy's skins in FNAF era are don't even look like the characters, so I can understand where that's coming from. And then we also have our first look at the upcoming Arctic Ballora action figure, and I absolutely love this one. I love the detail on it, I think it looks amazing. Maybe the stage could have been a bit more different, but overall, I think it looks awesome. It's also worth noting right now there's no release date for these guys, but I'd assume they're going to be released around the winter time. And both of them, the plushie of Frostbite Balloon Boy and Arctic Ballora figure, are going to be exclusive to Walmart. Moving on to U2s, we got a teaser for the upcoming King of FNAF Markiplier figure from U2s the other day. And not long after that teaser, we got the full official reveal of the figure, releasing on the 4th of November. This is what the figure looks like. As you can see, Markiplier has skinned Freddy Fazbear and is wearing his fur as a cloak. I love the art on the box. Looks amazing. The figure itself, I'm not too big a fan of, but I don't think it looks horrible. We also got confirmation from U2s that a Help Wanted wave is on the way. The wave will include a figure for Dreadbear, Grim Foxy, Glitch Trap, and Shadow Mangle of all characters. And as a matter of fact, we actually got a teaser for the Shadow Mangle figure. It's just going to be Mangle, but fully pla uh, painted black, which technically is a character in Help Wanted. They appear in the hard mode for Mangle's vent repair minigame, but it's still just weird that they're doing that character. I can only assume they wanted to have four characters, and I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just weird that they would do Shadow Mangle. I'm guessing they're going to wait and do a toy wave with Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, Toy Chica, and Mangle later on. At least I hope so, because if, if we get a Mangle figure, but it's only Shadow Mangle, that's going to leave a lot of people disappointed. So I'm just holding out hope that eventually at some point we do get a regular Mangle figure. Lastly, for U2's news, someone asked uh, Austin from U2's in their Discord, what's the theme of the next FNAF wave? Austin replying with a purple heart emoji. Now we do have a purple guy figure coming out later this year. This is what he looks like if you, uh, if you forgot. But considering the fact that this is talking about an entire wave of characters, not just one figure, I asked Twitter to see if they had any thoughts on the wave. Looks like a lot of people are assuming it's going to be a full-on purple guy or William Afton themed wave. We do know that a Springtrap figure will be coming out next year, but also it doesn't really align with the, the wave release date for Purple Guy because he's coming out later this year, Springtrap not till next year, so it's interesting. What do you guys think the next wave's gonna be? Moving on now to some Fazbear fanverse news. We've got yet another weekly Pop Goes update. This is from the 21st of October, which means we should be getting another weekly update tomorrow. I should probably plan these FNAF news videos better, so <laughs> I'm not doing them a week before this week's update. I'll figure it out. For the Pop Goes Evergreen section, Kane and Garrett are still working on modeling some phone skins for the game, saying we had a phone modeled in maybe 2020 based on a very old television, which we're going to be redesigning and splitting into two, one super old from the 50s 
TV with a black and white screen, and then a more recent CRT TV, 90s, 2000s, with a color display. He briefly touches upon some of the brand new characters that him and Alexis have been modeling and designing, announcing that three out of the five brand new characters have been finished, and that the fourth one should be done around Halloween time. And finally, for Evergreen, Tigera, who is an artist on the game, has finished illustrating 10 lore-focused drawings, and that she'll continue help with blueprints and other documents. The Pop Goes Evergreen section touches upon the brand new update. We finalized the latest update and are sorting out finishing touches based on feedback from testers. We found a couple of minor bugs, but it's wrapping up now. We're confident that the update will be available before Halloween. And lastly, for the Pop Goes Evergreen weekly update, we have some merchandise. Kane says that he was shown a first prototype of Hex's upcoming Pop Goes plushie, and that <laughs> it looked, quote, horrendous, which is always a good sign to hear. Luckily though, he did go on to clarify, but this is to be expected. If you followed along with how Daco has described the process for the Hex plushies, they are always bad on the first prototype. It takes maybe three to five iterations before the design is perfected, so he's not worried at all about it. Apparently, the prototype also featured a corduroy fabric design that Kane pitched in, though it looks like the material is fantastic, colors are a bit off, but Kane is very, very optimistic with the plushie, which is always is great to hear. Finally wrapping up the Pop Goes section of this FNAF News video, the greatest game of all time, dare I say, is officially on sale. That's right, Pop Goes Arcade, baby! It's on sale, $3.99, go get the best game ever, the greatest FNAF game, greatest spin-off game, it checks every category, it wins every single nomination. If it wasn't a steal before when it was five bucks, god dang it bro, we're practically robbing Kane Carter, we're, we're <laughs> holding him hostage, because we are taking his money. This is a steal. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I guess talking about sales, uh, Steel Wolves doing some too. So Pop Goes Arcade is not the only FNAF game that is on sale right now for the Halloween season. Steel Wolf has revealed that Help Wanted is currently on sale on the Nintendo Switch. Security Breach, the Curse of Dreadbear DLC, and the main game of Help Wanted are also on sale for Steam. And Help Wanted is also on sale on Oculus. Oh, and also Security Breach is on sale for PlayStation. So a whole bunch of sales going on right now. So if you don't own any of these FNAF games, feel free to go get them while they are on sale and also while we're here we absolutely need to celebrate the anniversary of the curse of dreadbear dlc three years we've had dreadbear in our lives and to celebrate the anniversary steel will release some spooky gifts for everyone to use from help wanted from the freddy and friends on tour and also security breach and speaking of steel wool the final topic for today we're getting yet another interview with the fine folks over at steel wool very soon because game jolt on November 4th, 11 a.m. PT, is gonna be interviewing Jason and Brian from Steel Wool Studios, creative director, design director, uh, respectfully, which is gonna be very, very interesting. Not quite sure what the question's gonna be about. I highly doubt we're gonna get any groundbreaking news during this interview, but I thought I'd mention it just so you can keep your eyes out, just in case. And maybe if I'm free that day, we'll do a live reaction to it, but I also have to check out uh, if I'm able to. <laughs> That's gonna be interesting, something to look forward to. And that's going to do it for this FNAF News video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.